Hello everyone, His Royal Fatness here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be continuing the How To Play series in the Leopard 1. Now, I'm gonna be playing three consecutive battles here. I'm gonna show you what I did well, what I did poorly during those games. I'm gonna break down my thought process and why I made the decisions I did. Hopefully, that will be helpful for you when making decisions while playing the Leopard 1. And I'm gonna show my equipment loadout right about now. Now, as I always say, equipment's completely subjective to you as a player, but this is what I feel comfortable running on the Leo one. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into the first battle. Alright, so here we are on Mayan Ruins, and what I like about this replay is I really demonstrate the ability to isolate targets in the Leopard 1, which is something that's super important for this vehicle. Um, just because you have such poor armor on this tank, it's really difficult to brawl in this vehicle. But if you can isolate the enemy, find vehicles that are in different positions where they can't really be supported by the team, you can really use your DPM and mobility to outplay those vehicles. Now, I am pushing up to this bridge, and that's because I wanted to spot up to see what was pushing up towards the middle of the map, and I find all three of their medium tanks. And I really do like this position on the bridge because you can pull out so easily. If you get pushed from, from the front, you can just turn around and run away. If you get pushed from behind, you can just go straight forward and run towards the enemy if they have enemies there. It's a pretty flexible position and you can really get good spots early in the game. So I'm just trading shots with this Leopard 1. Now a Conway is going to get spotted behind me and put a shot into me. I'm just going to aim one more shot into this Leopard 1 and just turn around and get out of this position. I do not want to be here with a Conway, a Leopard, and an E5 with me. I know that I would be leaving the T54E1 by himself, but I have no other support than him. He doesn't have the best DPM, and if I'd stayed there and taken that fight, I would have lost a lot of HP there, and that's not what you want to do with the Leopard 1. I've already lost a good chunk of my hit points. I don't want to lose any more hit points at this point, and so staying at that fight, even if I had a chance of killing the Leopard there, is just not a great decision. So that's why I pulled out, and I found the isolated tank on the enemy team. This 183 he pushed up into a bad position by himself. He doesn't have support from his team because by looking at the minimap, I can see the enemy team is in the middle of the map. So I'm just going to try and snap shots into the top of this 183's turret. His accuracy isn't really the best. So in a Leopard 1 where you have some of the best accuracy in the game, it's pretty easy to take a position where you can just out, out snapshot a 183. Now, this next shot I'm going to make is a little bit questionable. I definitely wouldn't recommend poking a 183 like that. He could have shot me there and maybe even killed me there, so uh, a bit of a reckless move there. I wouldn't recommend doing stuff like that, but I mean, it worked out for me, but definitely, yeah, don't, don't poke on 183s like that. So, now, we have a Conway, and this Conway I know is going to push up through the bridge. I'm just waiting for an opportunity where I can track him in place, and that's exactly what happens. Now, I'm assuming the Chieftain's going to hit a shot on the Conway, and then I can pick up the kill. Perfect. Now, what do we have in this situation? We have four remaining tanks. A mouse is pushed up aggressively on our E5, and they have all of three, the three remaining teammates down low committed to killing our E75, which means this mouse is unsupported. I can push straight up behind him and start putting shots into him without getting shot back because the enemy team is so far down low, which is exactly why I chose him because he was isolated from his team. I wanted to push up and just take this mouse out as fast as possible. And as soon as I kill this mouse, I see the STV ones pushing into a haul down position. I really do not want to take that fight. I'm just going to pull out once again. Now the T-54, he was spotted pushing down the river towards our spawn. So I'm going to push out and try and see if I can intercept that 54. And he does get spotted in our spawn as I had anticipated. He is once again another isolated target. And I'm just going to go straight for that T-54 while he's isolated. Because he's firstly, he's the lowest HP. Secondly, he has really no support from his team and I can kill him relatively quickly. So I'm going to put a track shot into him just to kind of keep him in place. I was hoping the Chieftain would pick up the kill, but uh, the 183 decides to take care of him for me. So, what do we have here? We have two full health, full health tanks, an STB-1 and an E5. Not the best situation to be in, but my priority right now is to try and find one of these tanks by themselves and start pressuring them. Here's where I make a bit of a mistake. I push up into a position where I'm not going to have much support for my teammates. I thought my team was going to hold mid, and I anticipated the E5 was going to push through through the encounter cap through mid because he set off the cap so i thought well maybe the e5 was going to push up and i could get rear shots on this e5 unfortunately he was actually a little bit closer to me than i anticipated i was aiming for a track shot there unfortunately i missed and here's where i make the misplay of the game i should have just ran away here i should not have even tried to stay and take this fight now the reason i did try and stay to take this fight is because i was trying to perma track this e5 unfortunately as i messed up two out of my three tracking shots this e5 is now in a position where he can just beat me and yeah 
Not the best play there. I definitely should have just ran away. However, if I had been successful in hitting all of my track shots, I probably would have been able to take out that E5 relatively quickly. But either way, my team managed to clutch the game in the end, so I'm pretty pleased with that result. But yes, don't don't put yourself in a situation like I did there. That was definitely a mistake taking a position where I didn't have support from the team and I tried to one versus one a heavy tank and the E5 has good damage per minute. If I had taken his tracks off then it might have been a little bit different but it was a risky play and it definitely didn't pay off for me during that battle. Now we are on Hellas for the second battle and I'm pushing up right now. I'm just going to be straightforward with you, I am not a huge fan of Hellas as a map, it is just so campy, and it's not my favorite map for the Leopard 1, especially when the enemy team has two FV4 202s. However, I still pushed up right, and that's because I wanted to get early spots up on their team, and I'm anticipating the Grill is pushed up, so I'm going to try and blind fire that bush, and the Grill in fact did push up, he just was on the other side of the rock. And I'm going to put a nice snapshot, aiming for track shots here to try and take his tracks off because my goal is to make them use up the repair kits, which is always great. And you're going to see how snappy the Leopard 1's gun is. And that's what I love so much about this tank. Its gun is just one of the best on a tier 10 medium tank. I would say the T62A is the only tier 10 medium tank that has a comparable gun to this. And here we are is not a great situation. There's a grill covering these two 4202s. If the 4202s push me, they'll kill me so fast. With that 440 Hesh Alpha, they will just rip me to pieces. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just being a little bit patient, trying to see if I can spot up their 4202 or their grill again, but he's not going to get spotted up there. Now the 183 does get spotted, and I'm like, okay, they have a 183, a Yag, a grill, two 422s committed to this side of the map. It is my time to push out of this position. We're going to die here if we stick around for a super long 422 is not going to make it very far. Now, I'm going to use this rock as cover from their 4202 just so he doesn't hash me in the rear. Unfortunately, as I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing, I showed my supreme driving abilities at hitting rocks. It seems like I drive into rocks a rather lot on Hellas, especially. So, yeah. Um, but now, I'm pulling completely out of this position. Now, I want to hold spawn. And that's because by holding spawn in this position, I'm putting myself in a position where I'm holding off multiple of their tanks multiple tanks on the enemy team from pushing in on my team. So it's just me and a Hori here, but they have a grill, two FV4 2s on this side of the map. If I was to run away and get spotted fighting their heavy tanks on the left side of the map, absolutely no one's here to stop these tanks from just killing the Hori, taking dominance over our spawn side of the map and just winning the game instantly. So I'm going to play passively. And what I'm going to highlight about this replay is I'm very, as I play very defensive this game. And there's no real targets I can isolate because this map has so many lanes of fire, I can't just push in and especially with the 4 2s the 183, the Yag, the Grill, the E100, it's very hard for me to find a position on this map where I can isolate the enemy. So instead, I'm going to take a very defensive position in our spawn. I'm going to get a nice shot onto that Gorilla. So, what do we have here? We have a Yag pushed up low. That Yag is going to be my priority eventually, but I still want to see if I can get early shots or on these 4-2-2s if they poke. I get a little lucky that 4 2 2 missed there. And yeah, I'm, I'm just being patient here. I just not much I can say. I'm just trying to stop these these three tanks here from YOLOing into our spawn. I'm going to see if I can get another shot on the 4 2 2 However, he's not going to poke. And I, I'm just getting a little bit impatient here. I'm like, okay, this Yag Frenzy 100 pushed up very aggressively. We're down on two kills. I need to be a little more aggressive now because I still have HP. So I'm aiming for a shot on this Yag's lower play. I'm not exactly sure how that shot missed, but it's going to be okay because our Hovri is still going to put another shot into the Yag. I'm going to pick up the kill here. And what I could have done different in this scenario was push back for the 4-2-2 and girl behind us. However, I saw the 183 had pushed down low into the into the kind of bridge area and I decided I wanted to try and take out this 183. Now, I am going to successfully take the tracks off on this 183. I'm going to take tracks off once, take him off again. He's going to use his first repair kit right about now. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to take his tracks off once more so he uses his second repair Okay, now he's out of repair kits, but unfortunately the 183 had time to pull all the way into my position. What I could have done here was be patient and taken off that 183's tracks again, but unfortunately I didn't. I didn't want to risk taking a headshot shot if I messed up my track shot, and here's where I make a huge mistake this battle. I don't really aim that shot. I had heat loaded, I anticipated it was going to pen, but it definitely did not pen. If I would killed that E100, uh, the outcome of this battle could have been much different, and yeah, um, I mean, just don't rush your shots if you don't have to. I mean, I had all the time in the world to zoom in and name that shot, but I messed it up. So now I'm in a bad situation. That E100 is actually going to be very, 
annoying because he's gonna hold off our IS-7 for a really long time. Now, the 402 is pushing me. I'm using this rock as cover and I'm gonna prioritize the 402 because the 183 is a lot slower. He doesn't have the turret traverse. But either way, I'm in a really bad position. There's a 183 in front of me and a 402 in front of me. And behind me, our IS-7 is doing a very poor job of killing the E-100 and the grill. So yeah, as you can probably anticipate, we're not gonna win this game. Now, what I should have done here is I should have just tried to bait a shot from the 183. I was just playing too passively. I was just trying to wait to see if the 183 would push one side so I can kill the 422. Fortunately, I waited too long. I should have just really just tried to bait a shot instead of just sitting here and I get double HE. So yeah, not a great game. I still did decent damage. You know, I did my part for the team. I definitely made some mistakes during that battle, especially in regards to messing up that shot on the E100, maybe playing a little bit too passively against the 183 when I should have just tried to bait a shot. Either way, we learn more from our mistakes, so yeah, uh, definitely aim your shots. That was the major mistake I made that battle, was just not aiming that one kill shot. It really screwed over my team. So, what am I doing in this game? We are on Canyon, which is one of my favorite maps for the Leopard 1, and I'm just taking an early aggressive spotting position on this map, and I'm going to be straightforward with you. This game isn't really amazing. I do get a pretty good amount of damage during this battle, but I don't make any kind of spectacular plays. This is just your kind of classic Leopard 1, hold the middle, and farm damage position. Um, I will highlight I'm not being super aggressive down the mid and that's because the enemy team has a few tank destroyers and The last thing I want to do is just YOLO up and get myself nuked for 1600 by a double tap or something That's just not a good way of effectively using your HP now I blind fired that bush because the t92 was spotted on this side of the map I wanted to see if he was Camping in the bush. He wasn't but he was in the area of vicinity So I put a nice snapshot into him at this point, I'm just playing passively. Now, you'll notice my team is definitely being very aggressive on the left side of the map. That one-to-one -one did notice that, which is why he pulled to the other side of this ridge to get himself to a safer position. And this 140 is going to make a big mistake. He's going to be really aggressive on this side. Unfortunately for him, he didn't realize I had a couple of teammates on my right, so his idea of pushing up behind me pretty much got thwarted right there. I mean... Now he's in a bad position. He's versus a Leopard 1 who's admittedly in a better position and who has better DPM and alpha damage than him. So I'm just going to pretty much spend the next minute or so just outplaying this poor 140 who really pushed up into a bad position. And my team is being uh, a little bit more aggressive finally. They realized, right, they're not in the... They're not all sitting on the left side of the map, and that's why I'm not going to be super aggressive here. I'm just going to try and get put some kill shots into this 140. I'm going to low roll, unfortunately, but my teammates take him out. So... Our enemy team is pushing left. The tortoise is spotted. I'm playing a little passively still. I'm just waiting for that 183 to get spotted before deciding on which side of the map I want to position myself in. Um, just being patient. I know most of the team is on the right. The 183 gets spotted. Okay, he doesn't have a shot on me, so I'm going to push left. And I'm going to see if I can try and start working on this 121 who isn't paying attention to me. So I'm just going to put a shot through his turret. And he's going to really regret trying to take that one shot. I mean, he gets triple tapped there. And at this point, the game's already won. I mean, the 183 and the tortoise are pretty much dead already. I'm just going to farm some damage into this tortoise. And I guess what I could really highlight about this replay is how effective the DPM is on this vehicle, how fast you can just delete tanks, especially late game when you can start being a little more aggressive into Leopard 1. In a scenario like this, the enemy team really has no chance of winning. I'm gonna put a shot into this E4, and I was gonna try and shoot him again, but I was gonna be patient, see if I could get a shot on the T92 if he ran away. He did not though, so I'm gonna put another shot into this E4's hatch. And yeah, this E4 is not gonna be around much longer. He's, he's just gonna put a shot into our bat chat and then get him, and he's gonna get killed. So. Yeah, E4 didn't have a great game. I mean, the enemy team wasn't spectacular. I, I can't really say this game was amazing. Sure, I'm going to do a decent amount of damage, but it definitely could have been better. Now, I bounce off the Sheridan there, which is kind of a surprise. I was like, wait, wait, how'd that bounce? It hit his turret. So, I'm just going to put two shots into the Sheridan. That's because our, left, our AMX-30 is focusing him, so I wanted to prioritize the same target. And since the Sheridan was lower HP, but now the Sheridan is pretty much dead. I'm just going to push on this T92. I was aiming for a track shot here. I do miss the track shot, but I get the fire, so I'm perfectly happy with that. Um, yeah, and this game was just really fast. So, I may as well just review how to play the Leopard real quick. So, the first thing I'm gonna mention is prioritizing your targets carefully. So, for instance, I did wise target selection on that 183, that T-54, the mouse. I did not do wise target selection on the E5. I should have just relocated. I took a bad brawl, and that's also what I wanna jump into with the Leopard one, is try not to find situations where you're gonna have to be brawling other vehicles. You have amazing guns, so 
Choose positions where you're not going to get pushed on or you're directly in the line of fire of vehicles. And finally, aim your shots. And I think this is just a good tip in general. Don't rush shots just because you think you have an easy pen. You're like, just, just thoroughly aim it because me bouncing on that E100 definitely threw that Hellas game a little bit. So I hope you enjoy today's video and I hope it was helpful for you guys in figuring out the Leopard 1. Please feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and I hope you all have a wonderful day.